Let's see, what did I do? Here they are. Decided I put on these. Hi, CJ, how are you? How's your channel going? You've been doing any interesting mukbangs lately? Hey, Angela. Good morning. I'm still getting ready. I'm a little late. Hey, Editing Lakes. Thank you guys for being patient. I know I'm a few minutes late taking care of the kids. It happens. Hey, Vias. Santa, hi. All is well. Hey, Jada. Lexine. Is it Rajas? Rajasi? Did I say that right? Elena, how are you? Nature creature, we've got Danny S here. Colin is back. I am doing well. Hi, sweetie pie, what do you need? Oh, it was a wonderful Thanksgiving. You wanna say hi? You wanna say hi? No? Do you wanna say hi, everyone? Hi, Mona. Hi, Mona. Uh, I'm sweating. I don't think I'm sweating. I just didn't put any powder on. Um, okay, cover your mouth when you cough. Hey, Roman. Um, um, excuse me. Uh, yes, they're saying hi, Elijah. Um, are you just doing that for attention? I just burped. You burped. That's pretty funny. Um, hi, good morning. I don't think he's sick. Well... I think he's just trying to get attention. I don't know. But we did sleep outside. Well, we slept in a tent. We went camping. It was kind of chilly out. Um, <clears throat> VS says, holidays are not about how much money you spend. They're about how much love you give. That sounds like the tagline for a darn man film. <laughs> it probably was. <clears throat> oh, thank you, Jane, the shy gaming Roblox. We've got Sri here. Okay, Demetrius is here, back with us all. <clears throat> it's snowing in the UK. Well, some parts of California, Northern California, it snows, but thankfully I'm in Southern California. I had enough snow when I grew up in Minnesota, so you don't really need any more of that. <clears throat> so, uh, I know that we are the only ones that celebrate. Um, Thanksgiving, and even that's controversial for some people, but speaking of all that food we ate on Thanksgiving, hey Shanti, uh, he's three, uh, and I also have, um, a, I also have a teenager, I have a 13 year old, did we forget about the true meaning of the holidays, many seem to associate the holidays with shopping for expensive gifts, well I don't do any of that stuff. So, I guess some people are doing that. I'm not doing that. So, did you see the title for today? <laughs> I called today Garden of Eaton plus Q&A because I figured I would read, uh, before we get into the Q&A, I would read a little poem from my book. Um, yeah, I don't like shopping either. I only go if I absolutely have to. And lately, I prefer just shopping online. The hard part is, is if it's something you're going to wear. I bought, ordered a pair of shoes. They don't fit. I order different things, and they don't fit right. They're too big or they're too small or whatever. So, you know, just like I said in um, the Darman feature film. Did you guys see the Darman feature film? Hey, Al Batten. I said, Thanksgiving is the one time of the year you're supposed to have seconds. Um, so we overindulge during the holidays. We overindulge during Christmas. Hey, Nadine. And um, let's see, Elena. You, oh, she's not talking to me. Hey, Derek. The audio is staticky. That might be your, thank you for the gift. That might be your that might be your connection where you are. Is anyone else having um, staticky issues on the film? Or on the film. <laughs> I'm reading the comments and trying to think at the same time. Is anyone else hearing me coming in and out staticky? Shanti said the film made me cry. Sri said it's not, it's a little static. No. Okay. 
I do. Loud and clear for Elena. So maybe it's internet connection because I think if it were me, it would be like staticky for everyone. Does that make sense? The movie was epic, Veer said. Um, I did watch the feature film. It was amazing and emotional and too much crying. Yeah, I agree. There, there's always like too much crying. <laughs> but it was very emotional. I think, you know, I think if you were going through that in real life, you'd probably be crying and upset too, you know. As a mother, thinking the worst of what could happen to her child, especially, oh, you downloaded the book and read it during slow times at work. Love, love, love. <laughs> I'm going to read one from the book because I don't think everybody has it or has read it. Um, yeah, it was, it was emotional. I made the edit for the feature film. Let's see, edit, and you reposted it on your story, and you DM'd me about your book. Cool, but not everybody has downloaded it. So the reason I wanted to read the one called Garden of Eaton, because I think we all overindulge during the holidays, <laughs> and then January, everybody joins the gym, and everyone's like, this year, I'm going to get in shape. This year, I'm going to lose that last five, ten pounds. This year... And then that lasts for like three weeks and then we're back to our old eating, ha eating habits or eating habits. So I'm going to read my poem, Garden of Eaton. It's fun. It's light. It's a, it's, it's, you know, if people have issues with, with themselves and, you know, this is just gives a few tips on how to, how to eat healthier for the holidays. Okay. Garden of Eaton. You know, guys, did you know the Bible calls... Um, our body, the temple of God. So the body is the temple of God. Does it need to be cleaned out? Does your body need to be cleaned out and replenished with good things? So just so you guys know, I'm going to spend a couple minutes reading this poem and we can talk about it. And then we'll go back to your questions. Angela said, I love that poem. When medical conditions pile, when wiggling with some extra weight, when it's been far too long a while, when we felt good, forget the great, when body aches and we're confound, when joints inflamed are screaming too, when we've seen doctors all around, when they say, there's nothing we can do. Prescriptions worn, swallowed and swigged, we're leery popping each horse pill, Perhaps we are their guinea pigs. You ever felt like that? With no results, why get refills? I had some prescriptions recently. I did not get refilled. Remember when, as a teen, we'd sit on hoods of cars and not make dents? And now it's just our hats that fit. For fashion, we're forced to wear those tents. I don't know about you guys, but you know the whole quarantine 15? Being locked up in our house? I think I put on like the quarantine 30. I think I doubled it, you know, cause I'm an overachiever. <laughs> I always go above, <laughs> above and beyond. Hey Frank. Okay, so despite whatever our sizes, this is just, it's just a fun poem about where some people might be. So don't take it to heart, okay? We know that God's got love for us, but we don't know how to love ourselves. We try all that we know and trust, but it hasn't helped our healths. Seems everyone has got the key. Try this, buy this is their advice. Organic food can sure be spendy and we're not sure it's worth the price. No counting calories, fat or calories, no need to weigh or measure food, nor spend entire salaries removing carbs till we're unglued. It's simple. Okay, here's the key, everyone. You want to be healthy? It's simple. Take the man-made out and put the God-made food back in. You know, the stuff that grows and seeds and sprouts? That's what we humans need to win. God made what's prime on which to dine. No other's best on earth to suit. In Genesis 1, 29, he gave us herb-bearing seeds and fruit in perfect paradise bounty. If we were craving something sweet, what do you think that we would seize when it was time to eat? It's not going to be Mars bars. It's not going to be Snickers. Uh, it's not going to be Twizzlers. 
right? If you were in Garden's Paradise that God made, what would you grab if you were craving something sweet? Would it be high fructose corn syrup for your gut with additives so artificial? When God has given us a glut in paradise to wet our whistle with every flavor we could try. And boy, it's never been more handy. Just leave it in the sun to dry and we've got some Eden candy. So what am I talking about? Dried fruit. You take the sweet stuff God made and if you want it more sweet, okay, you just leave it out in the sun to dry. And now you have dried fruit. That's, that's nature's candy. <laughs> Our bodies had enough abuse. Try superb aminos. Its protein cells are better used and plant foods great for your bambinos. Speaking of bambinos, I got mine right here. If we crave something savory, then grab some greens and avocado, some wholesome grains to make them flavory, add endives and a ripe tomato. Right? Oh, have Timmy help you. Can you have Timmy help you? No, I don't want to help. I don't want to. No, 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 no. Okay, we're taking a break. We're taking a balloon break because somebody, somebody just wants a balloon. <gasps> I don't know if I have enough air in me. It's pressure because I got people watching me. turn red okay this is all you're getting you're getting just a tiny little balloon i think this is a water balloon that's why this is so hard to blow up look at this oh. puny little thing i'm giving him you know it looks like a christmas light deal with it deal with it. it you can pop it you can squish it you can play with it well we're we're talking about our health in the new year and what we're going to do during the holidays okay whatever that we choose to eat it shouldn't be laboratory made Hi, Cringe Man. Hi, is it Kurixi? Okay, whatever that we choose to eat, it shouldn't be laboratory made. And if our illness can't be beat, Psalm 104, 14, our aid. Yep, that's what the great physician recommends, that man should be prescribed the herb. Hey, 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 don't do that. So, so God said when you're sick, you know, he's got all these herbs he made for us. I know some of you think of something in particular when I say the herb, but that's not what I'm talking about. Um, there's a lot of wonderful leaves and plants God made to help us. It's right here in his word, my friend, so don't blame me if you are perturbed. Our bodies make are new for sure. That's why he made what should go in. Have you tried Aunt Jemima's so-called maple syrup? Give me the real stuff. I want the real maple syrup tapped from that tree. He knew what would make us. God knew what to put in our bodies for sure. That's why he made what should go in. No revolutionary cures are miracles to make us thin. Self-righteous are our habits viewed. You know, some of us, I have a friend. I was probably talking about her when I wrote this. She would like put other people down and like think she was better than them because she didn't drink and she didn't smoke and she didn't do it. But she was... 400 pounds, morbidly obese. No hate if you are, but don't be putting other people down for their bad habits. Okay, that's this next section I was writing about her. So self-righteous are our habits viewed because we don't drink or smoke, do meth, but we're ODing on most foods and eating to disease and death. It's not about our girlish waist but more our health when grocery shopping. Don't fill your cart to suit your taste or clothing buttons keep on popping. <laughs> Has that ever happened to you? That happened to me once when I was at a business meeting. I had put on a little bit of weight and my blouse button popped, it popped at the meeting. So, um, do you need some attention? How come you're so quiet and chill when I'm not online, huh? Hi, puppy pals. Did you want to show your friends? Is that your motorcycle guy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You don't... Okay. Do you need to? Sh is this something you need to share? 
Oh yes, I'll get to the questions in a couple in a couple oh, lines. God. Those of you who aren't used to this, I I always talk about something or read something I before I answer fat questions. Fat okay, so mm. so don't just fill up your grocery carts just with everything that tastes good, guys. <laughs> I think I've ruined your dinner plans, and most of us don't want to hear it. Forgive me if I Close reprimand. Clean temples better house the spirit. So, in all honesty, when God calls us the temple and wants us clean, he's not really talking about food. But I decided it would be a fun way to bring, you know, put into the book something about how it's important that you eat the stuff God made and not the stuff that Kellogg's made or any of the, any of the food brands. Nabisco. So if we can do our best to shop on the perimeter of the grocery store, all the fresh stuff and not all the stuff in boxes, bags, and cans in the center of the store, I think we would all be healthier and happier and more energetic. Okay, patiently waiting for me to answer your questions, type them in, put them up. Hi from South Jersey. And I love your Dar Man videos. Thank you, Shad. Were you expecting Sophia to be that amazing in the feature film? Did you expect her to go as far? Absolutely. Absolutely. Sophia is, she's one of the best. She's going to win Oscars. She's uh, probably the best child actor that we have. And honestly, she's better than some adults. She's just amazingly in touch with her emotions. Mona says, I agree. Eat God's whole foods rather than the fake. Malik says, where I live, we have reached an average of 587 cases a day. Are you talking about COVID? Why did you start a YouTube channel? Well, when I started way back in like 2006 or 2007, I think I just started it for my acting to put my acting stuff up. But then a few years ago, I started really feeling like I wanted to help people and share what I've learned along the way because I used to be kind of a wreck. And then as I started like really learning and developing and growing and I just wanted to share with people like how to get over their problems, how to get over their issues, how to get through something to let people know that they're not alone. So... <clears throat> That's when I started posting regularly. I think about three, four years ago, I started posting like, well, way before years ago, once a month. And three years ago, I think I started posting once a week. And maybe last, over a year ago, I started posting two videos a week. Then it went up to three videos a week. Um, just trying to help people feel like they're not alone and how to get through these tough times. You know, too many people have, they put out on their Instagram and their YouTube they just pretend like their life is wonderful. They just pretend like everything is great. They never talk about the real drama, trauma going on. I remember seeing this video once where someone was filming these people. They were at a bar and he, there was this filming going on. And then this girl was like holding up her phone for a selfie and her boyfriend, you know, he got in and they're like, woohoo, like really big smiles. And then when she's done taking the picture, he was like, just mad. Like he didn't want to be there. He didn't want to be with her. But somebody from across the bar had caught that. Like it was such a great show of like how fake some people can be online. That's why, you know, that's why I don't like, I've, I've, I'm, it's so for me, not about the outside, not about the fake and it's, 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 it's a balance I have to find because as an actress, like my, my agent or manager would say, don't be going online with your hair not combed and your makeup not on, but you guys know I do that all the time. Like, I'll just shoot a, I, if I get an idea, like God wants me to tell you something, I will shoot an idea in my pajamas with my hair not combed, with no makeup on, whatever. Because for me, it's more important to get the message to you than it is to like, pretend that I'm always looking stylish, pretend that I always have it all together. And I don't, I don't think that helps people. When you watch someone, every time you see someone, they're like in designer clothes and they just paid $300 to have their hair 
curled for the video and they they're just showing you their mansions and is is that really helpful yes in some ways it's aspirational like ooh, i would aspire to be at that level one day where i could always that i don't think that helps the normal regular person that's that's just me so i try to be real with you guys i i let you, you know even my husband's like don't show the house when it's messy i'm like but 99% of the time it's messy. So why should I just show it the 1% of the time right before we're gonna have company? <laughs> you know what I mean? So it may make some people look down on me or think less of me because I'm a mess or whatever, but that's reality. And I think there's nuggets of wisdom that that can still be given that you can still get out of it and, and have people that you feel like you know, I feel like people can, uh, maybe I'm not rich or famous or whatever people like, or I don't have like the supermodel body or whatever, but I think the kind of aspirational stuff I tend, I want to put out there, I think regular people can be like, well, I may not be able to be like this person, but you know what? I can get, I could be like Catherine and, you know, just letting it all hang out. Does that answer your question? Okay. Have you ever been to a different country? Yes. Is it Koruxi? I don't know if I said your name right. I've been to Mexico, Canada, and Ireland. Okay. Let's see. Blake says, I think you would make a great pastor. Thank you. Um, take your time, Catherine. No hurry. Do I like high fructose corn syrup? I mean, it's supposedly so bad for you, but I did have some this weekend. <laughs> I was camping and I had a soda. I had a ginger ale, which is my second soda for 2021. I normally have one soda a year. But it was, woo, we were partying, so I had a can of ginger ale. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll do a, I'll do, you guys liked my, like, home life vlog, so I'm like, I don't know why anyone wants to see my boring life, but I was like, I'm going to film us while we're on this little camping trip, and so you guys will see a vlog of that. I'm kind of behind, so maybe in a couple months. If you see some videos a couple months from now, where I have this scratch on my head, it's not, it's not, I do not have another scratch. It's from this time, but it takes, sometimes takes me a while to put things out and edit them. As you guys have probably seen some of my videos I put out, you're like, is this a couple years old? Yes, it probably is a couple years old. <laughs> so one of my goals for this new year is to get organized. So go through my hard drives and organize and find all my videos because I would just be shooting stuff and then not having time to edit and put it out. But I think what I'm saying is still important and you guys would want to hear it. Even if I look a couple years younger in certain videos I put out, I think what I have to say is still helpful. Okay. Mona says, I have family members who are hard on others with being physically presentable. I've learned to do what's comfy for me. Yeah. Okay. So that you bring up a good point. Okay. <clears throat> I talk about this in my course. Um, the outside doesn't matter, but if you guys like, for instance, want to share the love of God with people and you want to tell people how much God loves them and how God can give you a better life, maybe when you're doing that, you shouldn't look like you just crawled out of a dumpster and they shouldn't need a gas mask to sit next to you not a good witness <laughs> but but there there's the happy medium right i used to take 30 minutes to an hour to get ready before i leave the house i wouldn't even go to the grocery store without makeup on that is so not me now so you know the pendulum can swing both ways so be presentable don't have body odor and bad breath <laughs> 
But no, do you need to like have to go to the grocery store? Do you need to have on designer clothes and false eyelashes and high heels and whatever? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's get back to your questions. Um, what is your favorite acting in Darman videos? Uh, my favorite acting is like what like acting job I did. Um, I suppose there's a couple. I really like the one I did for Christmas last year where I was really snobby <clears throat> and making fun of the girl who made her own cookies, Ricky. I also like the one I did for the old is gold where I was playing that old fuddy-duddy lady that wanted things the old-fashioned way. That was one with the TikTok star kicked out of the office. Have you ever used to compare your life to somebody else's? Jarell, yeah, yeah. But I don't do that anymore because I never found that helpful. Okay, why does Darman say so you see? You know, I think it's just something he started doing and then it kind of caught on. And then for a while he stopped doing it. There were several videos where he stopped doing it because people were saying, why do you always say so you see it's so annoying whatever so he put out like a questionnaire like a vote on like do you want me to say so you see anymore or do you not want me to say it and um people voted and i think the reason he kept it is that more people voted that he should keep it than those who voted that he shouldn't hey steph sorry you couldn't sleep do you know that ginger ale is a mix of Coca-Cola and Sprite? Well, this one wasn't. This was Canada Dry. Okay. Uh, any video with Mikey is my favorite. He is my favorite troublemaker. I haven't done one with him recently. Um, I did one, I think that's coming out this week with the little person. And then I did another one last week that... Um, who was in that? I had a son. I had a son and we were adopting another son. So that'll be coming out soon. Um, I just want to say I love you so much and I'm very thankful for you. You are absolutely amazing and awesome. As always, God bless you and hope everyone sees how amazing you are. Thank you, CJ. You're so kind. Editing Lake says, what would you suggest is the best way to get into the acting industry? Well, I made a video on that on my channel, so please go to my channel and type in how to start an acting career. And I spill all the advice there. Oh, thank you, Annie. Annie says I'm an amazing actor. Jillian, okay, I just answered your question already. Um, I would start getting ready two minutes before going outside. Yeah, <laughs> that's me now. That's me like, I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to be on the live stream in five minutes? I'm going to do something to my face and hair real quick. And, you know, whatever. And that's why I was late, too. Because um, I had to get the kids breakfast and blah, blah, blah. Okay. So let's see what questions I missed. I didn't like the principal in the dress code one. She was mean. <laughs> yes, that was supposed to be me. But I was out of town. So Rebecca did a great job. She did, she did. Catherine, good point. I definitely not focus on designer clothes. Some families do focus on that, feeling the need to wear makeup over natural. Have you heard of Thaddeus E.K. who played a kid who would not show his mom the report card? Oh, um, I just worked with an actor named Thaddeus. Um... Would you suggest, let's see. Have you watched Squid Game? Um, is it X Lexi as Lexi? I tried to watch the first episode, but it was too violent. So I didn't, I didn't, I didn't watch it. Okay, how do you make your goals for dreams? How do you make your goals for dreams without being selfish? Um, you know, I struggled with that for a long time. Um, but you have to make goals and dreams. Oh, thank you, Elena. Thank you for the gift. You have to make time for your own goals because if your whole life, if you spend your whole life doing everything for everybody else, you don't feel fulfilled inside. You don't, I mean, yes, there's joy and happiness in helping others, but if God gave you a dream in your heart, 
and God gave you something specific to do, if you don't do it, you're going to be unhappy and you're going to be resenting everybody else. Um, I, I got to that point where my... He's spitting me. Oh, the Stegosaurus is getting me. Um, the Stegosaurus is in the back. Oh, no. Help me. Save me, Eli. Don't let him get me. Thank you. You're so brave. You're so courageous. You're going to be a mighty man of God one day. Yeah. You're going to stand up for what's right. Okay, what was I talking about? I don't even know. I don't even know what I was talking about. Um, let's see. Well, you'll remind me what I was talking about. Let's see. Uh, what age did you get into acting? I I actually started acting in grade in grade school. I did a couple plays, um, but like for real, started like right after high school. Um, the dinosaur. Okay, so forgive me for whoever's question I was answering. That I didn't finish answering. Catherine, you have scratches what, on your what, head, and I have bruises Catherine, from learning Catherine, the hoverboard. Catherine, are what, you calling me Catherine? What did the dinosaur say? To That's mommy to you. You, you can call me mommy cat if you want. Mommy cat. Mommy cat. <laughs> okay. Do you like the Catherine, short video, Catherine, the principal and the dress Catherine, code? Catherine. Uh, Catherine. It's okay. Yeah, Catherine. it was a good video. I mean, it brought up Catherine. a good point. And yes, yes, Elijah. Yes. Since so is this are you? Since when did you start calling me Catherine? Is this a new thing? Yeah, it's a new thing. Yeah, it's a new thing. It's because you heard me say my name on the on the live here. Yeah, on the live. Yeah, on the live here. Was Shantae in on the film? The uh, she was in the feature film. Are we talking about the feature film? She was in the feature film. She was married to the security guard who who had the scene with Sophia outside the outside the prison. How long do you see yourself doing Darman videos for? You're awesome in them. I I don't go into things setting a time limit, so I don't know. I guess when I get bored of them or when I don't have fun doing them anymore or if I move away or if I get too busy doing my own stuff. But I don't I don't know. I don't have a time limit. I did not see Rebecca at the premiere. I don't know. Not uh, not every actor was at the premiere. Um, the theater only held yeah. I don't know how many the theater held. 300 maybe. Uh. I'm just guessing. So he couldn't invite every actor uh. who's ever worked on Darman. I think he mostly invited actors who've done 20 or more films or maybe 25 or more films. We he he did a thing at the end where he acknowledged people by the number of Darman films they've been in starting at 25. So <clears throat> So I don't know. I didn't see her there. I don't know if that meant she was invited or not, but if you look at the IMDb page there's Dharma has hired over a thousand actors, so obviously they couldn't all be there because they don't fit. Um, Mona said I missed seeing Nick at the premiere. You know, ah, such a touchy subject now. Um, I hate to even bring this up, but you mentioned him. Um, I have a video coming out next week, probably on my. YouTube channel, it was supposed to come out Friday, but it didn't get finished editing. With Nick, um, I don't I don't think he's gonna be working with Darman anymore because he's been very critical of him. Um, he's been, you know, there's some things that he doesn't like about the way Dar decides to run his business and he's been publicly critical and and criticizing him, so. I don't know. I, I I don't care to be around that negativity. Oh, hey, have Timmy help you. Timmy said he would help you. Bye, CJ. Timmy, then you bring me the remote. Bring me the remote. 
So, yeah, I, I hate to bring it up, but I think that's, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. I, I, I try not to criticize anyone publicly. I think if I have a problem with someone, I'm going to tell them and I'm not going to blast it out for the world. But that's just me. I, I mean, everyone's going to handle their business differently. Okay. Annie, I'd love to be in a Darman video too. Hopefully, I'll get in a video someday. That was Blake talking. How long have you known Darman? Just a little over three years. Did you enjoy high school, Danny asks. I hated it. I miss Emmanuel Royale. I heard he was coming back. Somebody said he was in one recently, but I don't remember seeing that. Um, I don't know what's, what happened with that. I want to pursue my dream of playing semi-pro. I have read the word and starting to lose interest in college. Is that normal? <clears throat> well, you may lose interest in things you're not interested in. That makes sense. But I know in college there's like prerequisites. There's prerequisites. So there's certain things you have to do in order to, to do the other stuff that you want to do. I don't know. I don't get it. That's why I think, I think like technical colleges are great. Did we do it? Did it work, Eli? Because then you can go specialize in what you want to do. And you don't have to take all these other things that you don't want to do just to get to the point to do what you do want to do. So I know for some, for some jobs, it's, it's important to have a college degree and some don't hire you without one. For instance, where my husband works, you had to have a college degree to work there. Even if your college degree, thank you, Angela, for the gift. Even if the college degree has nothing to do with what you're doing for work, they just want to see that you have a college degree. So I would never get a job there. Thank God. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I just remember what the question was I was answering 10 minutes ago. Is it selfish to have your own dreams? No, you have to have your own dreams. You can't just ride someone else's coattails, live to please everyone, and then have nothing to show at the end of your life. You can't do that to yourself. You'll resent everyone around you that you've been helping, and you'll feel incomplete, and you'll stand before God one day, and he'll be like, what happened to those goals? What happened to those dreams I gave you? And you're going to be like, well, I thought it was selfish. No, it's not selfish. It's not selfish to have your own goals and dreams. Did it work, Eli? Yeah. Okay, good. <clears throat> so please have your own goals and dreams, but it doesn't have to be a selfish dream. You know, you want to play basketball? Well, what can you do with your basketball fame? What can you do with your basketball money to help people, right? So it doesn't have, so if you get rich and famous and all you do is buy your own self a mansion and, you know, you, meanwhile, there's kids dropping dead all over the world because they don't have clean drinking water. Well, guess what? How about you, instead of buying that Rolls Royce, how about you plant 50 clean water drinking wells in countries where kids don't have clean water? So money isn't bad. Fame isn't bad. You know, with your fame, you could use, you could... <clears throat> start projects you could start mission projects you could do things that help the vast amount of people but if all you want to do is have a dream so you can be lavish it all on yourself that is bad yes okay so let's see what you guys are saying Catherine, do you agree that there should be a film where a non-binary person gets made fun of you know there's so many topics in the world that First of all, nobody should be making fun of anybody. We should all show each other love, even if we don't agree with what everybody does. You know, even the scripture says God did not come into the world to, oh, see, now I'm going blank on that. To condemn the world. God didn't come into the world to condemn the world. Say, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're sitting, you're bad, you're bad, you're bad. He came to save the world, to draw them close to him. So when has it ever worked? When has it ever, 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 ever worked to put someone down and belittle them to greatness, to change, 
to be different. When someone is putting you down, making fun of you, telling you you're not good enough, telling you you're wrong, do you, are you like, yes, you're so right. How can I become like you? How can I be more worthy? How can I be better? Has that ever worked? It has never worked to put someone down to make them feel like they're nothing. Okay, so maybe maybe somebody is doing something, they're getting made fun of. Maybe you don't agree with what they're doing is right in their life. Does that mean you ridicule them? Does that mean you belittle them? Does that mean you make fun of them just because you don't agree with them? Is that what God would do? Or would God show love? You decide. <sighs> Okay, let's get back into these questions. Hey, Darman TikToks. Family does not require blood. It only requires love. Hey, Ghana. Welcome. It's okay if you're late. Hey, Cafaro. Cafaro? Maybe that's how you say it. Watching with my brother, Michael. He agrees and says hi. Hi, Michael. Darman fosters a very positive and inclusive environment. Not a negative, bad-mouthing environment. Yeah, I agree. I mean, there's so many times Darman could be negative and bad-mouthing people. You know, you have to rise above that. And, you know, you, you've heard the saying that if you, if you hear, you hang around people who are gossiping, it's just a matter of time before they start gossiping about you. So... You see somebody who's criticizing everyone, it's just a matter of time before they start criticizing you. Do you know the actress Emma Watson? I know of her work, but I don't know her personally. We are in the kitchen cooking tea. Cool. What time is it over there, Elena? I've tried to contact Dar to ask if I could act in a video, but I don't expect a response because he gets so many messages. Yeah, you. so they post their casting notices on LA casting. So if you're an actor and you're already acting and you have a LA casting account, you just look for the jobs and you submit for the jobs you're right for. Hey, what's the topic? I'm late. Well, we're kind of all over the map right now, but in the beginning we were talking about eating healthy. <laughs> uh, yes, I agree. Putting others down is nonsense. We are all God's creations and we need to love one another. Uh, Jesse Oakley says, Diana, Princess Diana made a difference in the world. She would have been 60 this year. May she rest in peace. Okay. I know I'm not getting to every single question, but keep putting them in. I've never heard Darman badmouth anyone. But I've seen him once point out... Um, how it's not like cool to make fun of others and but he was the topic of getting made fun of remember that video he did with Aiden and I and it, the subject was like Aiden quits Darman people were making fun of Dar Aiden for doing Darman and um Dar showed him look we all get made fun of we all get put down and he showed like um some famous youtuber Pewdie Pew or something like that, who was like making fun of Darman, putting him down. So to show Aiden, look, we all at every level, even I get made fun of showing him that. So I, that's the closest I think I've ever seen Darman come to. Um, it wasn't putting anyone down. It was kind of pointing out, yeah, this dude made fun of me. So, you know, whatever. I think that's the closest I've ever seen. Um, but it was like, you know, to teach a lesson, like, you're not the only one that gets made fun of. Okay. How to deal with an awkward situation? Uh, well, I think I need more info on that. That's hard to answer unless I know specifically what you're talking about. Okay. Um, thank you, Ganya. I'm in theater. Let's see, we've got Shad is in theater, media, arts, production, fashion, design. I love the video you did that tells autism is not a disability. It's a different ability. I have autism and I have dreams. Awesome. 
Sounds like you've got very creative dreams by all the stuff you're in. How are you doing today? I, the former train expert, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good today. How did the Dar Man feature film differ from the normal videos for you? Do you notice any difference? Sorry, this, if this doesn't make sense. No, it was totally different. It was totally different. It was like, it was like when I do, um, move, it was like when I do movies in Hollywood. It was a giant, full cast and crew, um, really cool locations we rented. We had different departments. We had department heads. You know, when I do stuff for Darman, it's a very small crew and we just move in fast and we just use what we've got. But this was, everything was like super precise. Um, there was probably two to three times the amount of crew. We had things we didn't, we don't have on like the Darman short films. Like when we do the Darman short films, we don't have hair and makeup and it, we don't have like a DP, like a lighting like a lighting person. We don't have set dressing. We don't have set designers making everything in the background look pr perfect. Um, props looking perfect. Um, there was, we don't, we hadn't up until recently had first ADs to keep things moving. Um, they rented like a, including the lent, like a $400,000 camera to shoot this feature film on. It really, looked like a feature film. The lighting was very filmic. It wasn't all like bright and cheery like the like the Darman shorts. There was a lot of a lot of differences. The editing the editing was different. You could tell the music composition was different. There was a lot of things that made it look richer and fuller and feet have the feel of like a Hollywood big budget movie. And I, they put, they put a lot into it and we shot it slower. We had a lot of special camera moves. You saw Sophia Lang, the camera was, they had to set up this rig where the camera was over her head. You saw like a lot of moving shots. We had like the dolly tracks laid. So it wasn't just static shot, static shot, wide shot, medium shot, close up. We had, they just, they, they took, they took a lot of time to shoot it. Um, whereas at the studio, sometimes we can be doing eight pages, eight pages of eight or nine pages, uh, a day sometimes in a feature film, they probably only shot five or six pages a day. I don't know. I found out at the premiere that it took Dar 12 days to write, which is insane. And it only took them 11 days to shoot, which Again, insane. You guys know Hollywood movies take like three weeks is really for a super, 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 super low budget movie. You know, films take a month, two months. If it's a really big budget action thing, that could take three months or four months to shoot. Um, so to shoot a film in 11 days, that that was crazy. But they, they took their time and they did things right. Oh, they had wardrobe wardrobe people making sure everybody's wardrobe was great they, they just had a, they just went like full out okay the feature film had me in tears in a good way it got me good i noticed some early scenes had jittery camera shots at the house oh i don't know i hadn't used i hadn't noticed so that may have been a choice that may have been a style choice i'm not sure i didn't i didn't notice so i've I can't speak on that. Ma'am, I even want to work with you. Stango edits. Thanks. Colin asks, is the Old Testament of the Bible wrong because it teaches the opposite of the what the New Testament teaches? The New Testament teaches the Old Testament has a lot of sexism and homophobia. Okay. It doesn't teach the opposite, Colin. It, it, what the New Testament does is it expands upon and shows us how to okay Eli it shows us how to correctly interpret the Old Testament so let me just give you one example from that um, if I had if I had prepared in advance I would have better examples so so there was 
So for instance, Moses says in the Old Testament, something about giving your wife a letter of divorce or something. <clears throat> well, so then Jesus takes that in the New Testament and he expands upon it, shows us a different way to look at it and, and tells us, you know, Moses said, you know, just write your wife a certificate of divorce and, <clears throat> or whatever he was saying. And then, but then he expands upon it. He says, you know, but that, that isn't how God wanted it to be from the beginning. He wanted you to, you know, to stay married to your wife, to, to, you know, have that be the forever relationship, to not just have a woman be someone you just dismiss when you get tired of her or she gets too old for you or whatever. And then Jesus goes on to explain, you know, you said, the Moses said you could give your wife a divorce or he goes on to talk about adultery. I hope I'm not getting this wrong. I'm trying to give a good example without having my Bible in front of me. So he, so it's like, he takes it a step further. He expounds upon it. So he says, okay, so you've heard, you've heard it said, Jesus is saying, you've heard the old Testament. They said, you know, it's bad to have adultery and fornication, but I tell you, see, here's Jesus expanding upon it, but I tell you, if you even look at a woman with lust, you have committed adultery. So it's not that the New Testament is completely contradictory to the Old Testament. It's that it's expounded upon, it's, it's opened up, it's turned on its head, it's seen in a different light, where Jesus is like, in, in a lot of cases, kind of telling you, you've, you've misinterpreted what the Old Testament has to say. Here's what God really meant by that. And here's what we, you know, here's what we can take out of it now. So if I had more time to think about this and study, I would have more examples to make it more clear to you. But it really is, Jesus quoted the Old Testament tons, tons, tons. So it's not that he was doing away with it. He's he's using it and he's telling, he's bringing it up to them in certain situations where the Pharisees or the Jewish leaders or the Sadducees or they're, they're, they're doing something that's stuck in their own way of religiosity, but is not necessarily um, in line with how God would want us to act or how God would want us to take those scriptures. So... So for instance, some of the higher up Jewish leaders were, they were doing everything perfect. They were following their over 600 laws, but you know, they were giving all their money to the church. They were, you know, doing everything outwardly that looked right, but they were like neglecting their family sometimes. So Jesus had to say, you know, you know, those, if you don't care for your own family, you're worse than an infidel. So he's saying, all you're doing to be so high and mighty in the church and to look so great in front of everyone else that you follow all the laws and you've got everything down precise, but then you, you're leaving your mom destitute? That's not God's way. So there was several, 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 several times where he's showing you if all you care about is following the Old Testament letter of the law, everything has to be done this certain way. You got to have these tassels. You got to have these. You got to do everything to look like you're righteous, but in your heart, you're not even caring for your family. You just want to look like you've got it all together in front of everyone. That's not what God intended for us when he gave us these laws. So God gave us the law so we would know what to do, you know, what was pleasing to him. But when God saw that we couldn't live up to, we couldn't even follow the 10 commandments, let alone the over 600 other ones in the Old Testament. God sent his only begotten son to, to be the propitiation for our sins, to take all of the sins we commit on himself, on his back, hang on a tree to, to take all the sins off us. So it becomes, the Old Testament becomes, it's of works. Like I got to work my way into heaven. I got to do all this stuff right. I got to do all this stuff correct for God to love me. Whereas the New Testament, 
Jesus came as the bridge. So now it's not, I got to do these 600 laws to be right in right standing with God. Now the New Testament took the burden off our back. He took the burden of sin and death off our back by having Jesus put it on his back, by him dying on the cross, being dead for three days, going down to hell, doing whatever, so that we could be saved by grace. So the difference is the Old Testament is all about laws and rules, and the New Testament is about grace. And it's not about us working our way to heaven. It's about what God did for us by sending his son. It's about putting our faith and trust in his son to take all away all our sins so that we can not have to be beating ourselves, flogging ourselves, so upset when we do something wrong, we can just say, God, forgive me. And we know that we're forgiven and we don't have to carry around the guilt. You know, we don't have to do penance. We don't have to do a bunch of like rosary prayers. We, do, we just go, thank you, God, for, for your son. Thank you for the grace for what, what you've done for me. And, and you can take that. God can take away all the stuff you've done and you're free. You're free to live a life without the bondage. Does that mean, this is where people get, they take it a little too far. Well, I have grace. I'm under God's grace, so I can do whatever I want. And he'll just forgive me. No, you can't do that either. <laughs> so though we're not bound by the rules of the Old Testament laws, we are also not free to just live like a wild person and keep on sinning just because God will forgive us, right? Because the scripture says, those who love me keep my commandments, okay? So now... Where the Old Testament, we're keeping the commandments out of obligation. The New Testament, it's more, it's more enlightened to us that we're keeping the commandments out of our deep, deep love for God and what he's done for us. You know, when you love someone, you want to please them. You want to do, you want to do what makes them feel good. So it's the same with God. If we love him, we, we try to do what pleases him. But if we fall and we stumble, like we all do, right? The scripture says there is none who is righteous. No, not one. Then we know we can get back up again. We can dust ourselves off and we cannot be so hard on ourselves because we know we all make mistakes, right? Look at the apostle Paul who wrote more books of the New Testament than anyone else. He says, the things I want to do, that I don't do. But the things I don't want to do, that I find myself doing, so he's in this conundrum, like, I want to do all the right things. And maybe some of you guys feel like that. I want to do all the right things. I want to, and then we fall into temptation. We do stuff we didn't want to do. We didn't mean to do. We're like, oh my gosh, why did I do that? Why did I, I said I wasn't going to, I said I wasn't going to do, I said I wasn't going to drink anymore, whatever. And then I went out partying with my friends and I was going to say no, but just, you know, whatever it is. We fall into these things and that's because we're human, right? So there's a place for forgiveness and there's a place where we can just, we know it's not according to our works because if it was just according to our works, then it would be like a, like a scale. Oh, well, I did 500 bad things, but look, I did a thousand good things. So that should get me into heaven. And God's like, no, it's not about what you've done or how good you can be. It's about what I did for you. And you accept that grace. You accept my son. You accept that. Then, then we can talk, right? Okay, hope that answered your question. Did you watch Oprah when you were younger? Yeah, I used to watch. I watched I watched a few of those talk shows. I've probably seen a few episodes. <sighs> okay. Did you enjoy the feature filming the feature film? I did. I hope I hope I get to do more of those. I really did enjoy that process. Okay. The birth mom was very convincing. She did amazing. I also love the humor of don't touch my orange. Yeah, that was kind of a funny little, little nice touch. I like what they did at the ending too. The little bit of humor they put in with the characters. Okay. I noticed some early. Okay. All right. So let's see if there's any last question I can get to before we, before we end today. Scottish nachos. I've never heard of that. 
This might be a silly question, but I don't celebrate Thanksgiving and I was wondering why people in America celebrate it. Okay. Uh, that I would say, normally it's, I would just tell you to Google that. They would have a better answer than I do. Natalie told me to ask you, when is Timmy's birthday? It's in two weeks, guys. Timmy's going to be 14 on December 11th. Mm-mm-mm. How do I force myself to stay awake? First of all, are you tired because you're not getting enough sleep? If you're not getting enough sleep, then you need to sleep. Or are you feeling tired because you're, you're, you have to do something you don't really want to do? <laughs> That's two different things. When I used to have to do like a hard task that I didn't want to do, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to take a nap first and then I'll come back to it. If it's something you know you need to do, then you just have to do it. Oh, someone's complimenting me on my skincare routine, Nadine. Thank you. I don't even have foundation on today because I didn't want to, like, I don't know, infect my little scratch. So the fact that you, like, think my skin looks good without foundation on, I'm so, like, wow. You know what I've been doing different the last week? Drinking a gallon of water a day. I'm doing a challenge right now where I'm drinking a gallon of water. I saw, if you if you go on Google, if you go on the internet, type in like the one gallon water challenge, I saw these people's skin before when they were just drinking like their six to eight cups of water a day. And then 30 days later, what their skin looked like when they were drinking a gallon of water a day. And I think it's making a difference. You know, it flushes stuff out. But you know, when people, when you, when you think about aging, think about this. What is the difference between a grape and a shriveled up wrinkly raisin. It's the same fruit, it's the water content. So I think drinking more water makes your skin look more youthful and it also helps flush all the toxins out of the body. Okay, so I'm gonna go because I normally am on here for an hour. It's been over an hour, you guys were great today. Thanks for listening to my stories, thanks for the great questions and um, I'll be putting up a new video tomorrow on Monday, 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and Wednesday and Friday. And you'll see me here again next Sunday, 8 a.m. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye.